Hello! Today we are weaving flowers. Every summer, Riot of Nature inspires me to create new flowers. So today we are making a quite simple but very nice flower. Experienced weavers will catch the idea of how to weave it at the first glance. This short masterclass is meant for those who haven't tried making flowers yet but would like to. First of all, a few words about tubes. For such a flower, I wrote tubes of uh, 5 cm or 2 inch uh, wide strips around a knitted needle, needle sized one. Depending on the type of paper, I get different kind of tubes. These ones are made of the thinnest paper, well, maybe the strip was 4 cm wide, 1.5 inch. I've tried thicker tubes too, but the flowers turn out rather crude. As for tube coating, I coat them in a traditional way. Paint and then varnish mixed with water. Then I dry the tubes and wrap them in a plastic bag. So I take a tube. First of all, I soften it. Then cut it into halves. After which, I start weaving as if in a herringbone pattern. Take a note, please, that these tails protruding from the right side are a bit longer than the left ones. Then take a look, please. I have placed one tube onto another, lead the upper tail downward, lead the right tail down here, and the third step Again, take the tail directed to the right, place it next to the left tube, and lead beneath the tube. The same steps as in the beginning of a herringbone pattern. That's all, I've got such a workpiece for a petal. Again, I soften the tails, directing the petals where they are supposed to be, and then I just place the right, the right tail onto the left one. It is where I apply glue. I use universal polymeric adhesive. Here it is. So once again, I place one tail onto another, mark where I'm going to drop glue, glue the joint thoroughly, smoothen the tails, join them, and fasten the joint with a closing clip. Universal polymeric adhesive sets quickly. So as soon as I've made four more such petals, they'll be ready to unite into a flower. Let's repeat once again. So lead the tube downward to the left, to the left again. and underneath one tail. Once again, one, two, bend. The properly prepared tubes are very obedient. Got it? And fasten with a closing clip. Let's check. There isn't enough glue. Compare the petals. They have to be identical. That's all. The second petal is ready. Create three more petals this way. As you must have noticed, every petal has been made of one tube cut into halves, which means five tubes are enough to make five petals. Now let's weave the flower core. 
cut one tube into halves as well and perform spiral weaving on four tubes. One, two, turn, three, turn. The first tube hasn't been involved so far. Turn. I'm showing the process slowly for those who haven't tried spiral weaving so far. One. Well, that'll do. Take a look, please, what I've got. Such a button-like core of the flower. Now, take a thread. I use no glue here. And start tying petals to the core one by one. It would be perfect if you take a thread of the same color as the tubes are. Join the second petal. One, two, three. Enough. The third petal. One, two, three. The fourth one. Leave some space for the fifth one, distribute the petals carefully and join the last fifth petal. Wrap a thread around the flower thoroughly. So I've got such a core and such a flower. Now let's prepare a stem. I take a wire. 0 0.9 mm thickness is quite enough. Insert it into the tube. This way it will be easier to shape the bucket with the flowers directed where they are supposed to be. So I put a piece of wire into one tube. Then I take one more tube and form the flower stem out of two tubes. Well, you can place uh, these tubes inside at the stage of tying the petals to the core. Actually, both options are possible. The stem holds on quite well. I'm going to fasten it with the help of the next tube. Now let's perform wrapping. I fasten the starting point with glue. Cover the thread to make the flower neat looking. And wrap the stem, making tight coils close to each other. The bulge is coming to knot gradually. If your tubes are too long and there are excessive tails left, you can cut them off. In my case, I've calculated the tube length in such a way to cut as little as possible. Then lengthen the tube and continue wrapping until the leaf. The flower would be incomplete without leaves. It is where you can improvise. I take one more tube, cut it into three parts. Well, you can make a leaf in the same way as a petal. But I'd like to introduce some improvisation and make a carnation-like leaf. So, I bend the tube in two points and make one more bend in the middle. 
Let's create a leaf like this. You can make a round or a novel leaf. It's up to your imagination. You can fasten the leaf with some glue. Then I just tie these leaves to the stem. You can make more or fewer of them depending on the size of your flower. Got it? After a few coils, let's join one more leaf from the other side. Bend and in the middle. This way. Drop some glue. And join the leaf to the other side. Lansen. You can add one more leaf here. Let me show you the way I finish. I've cut the tube with the wire inside a little earlier. Then I cut an empty tube like this. And tuck the tail in here. You can drop some glue. Well, there's one more point. You can add drips of glue in the process of wrapping along the whole stem. In this case, if you need to cut the stem shorter for the bucket, it won't be unwrapped. Then I cover the end with glue thoroughly and fasten it with a closing clip for a while. As a result, I've got such a flower. Due to a piece of wire inside, the stem can be bent in any direction to form a bouquet. Let's fasten it with a clothing clip for a while so far. Let it dry. So we've got such a tender, airy flower. <laughs>